there are a number of different maze solving algorithms, that is, automated methods for the solving of mazes. The random mouse, wolf follower, pledge, and tra copyright maze algorithms are designed to be used inside the maze by a traveler with no prior knowledge of the maze, whereas the dead end filling and shortest path algorithms are designed to be used by a person or computer program that can see the whole maze at once. Mazes containing no loops are known as simply connected, or perfect mazes, and are equivalent to a tree in graph theory. Thus many maze-solving algorithms are closely related to graph theory. Intuitively, if one pulled and stretched out the paths in the maze in the proper way, the result could be made to resemble a tree. Random mouse algorithm, this is a trivial method that can be implemented by a very unintelligent robot or perhaps a mouse. It is simply to proceed following the current passage until a junction is reached, and then to make a random decision about the next direction to follow. Although such a method would always eventually find the right solution, this algorithm can be extremely slow. Wall follower The wall follower, the best known rule for traversing mazes, is also known as either the left hand rule or the right hand rule. If the maze is simply connected, that is, all its walls are connected together or to the maze's outer boundary, then by keeping one hand in contact with one wall of the maze the solver is guaranteed not to get lost and will reach a different exit if there is one. Otherwise, he or she will return to the entrance having traversed every corridor next to that connected section of walls at least once. Another perspective into why wall following works is topological. If the walls are connected, then they may be deformed into a loop or circle then wall following reduces to walking around a circle from start to finish. To further this idea, notice that by grouping together connected components of the maze walls, the boundaries between these are precisely the solutions, even if there is more than one solution. If the maze is not simply connected, this method will not reach the goal. Wall following can be done in 3D or higher dimensional mazes if its higher dimensional passages can be projected onto the 2D plane in a deterministic manner. For example, if in a 3D maze up passages can be assumed to lead northwest, and down passages can be assumed to lead southeast, then standard wall following rules can apply. However, unlike in 2D, this requires that the current orientation be known to determine which direction is the first on the left or right. Pledge algorithm Disjoint mazes can still be solved with a wall follower method, if the entrance and exit to the maze are on the outer walls of the maze. If however, the solver starts inside the maze, it might be on a section disjoint from the exit, and wall followers will continually go around their ring. The pledge algorithm can solve this problem. The pledge algorithm, designed to circumvent obstacles, requires an arbitrarily chosen direction to go toward. When an obstacle is met, one hand is kept along the obstacle while the angles turned are counted. When the solver is facing the original direction again, and the angular sum of the turns made is zero, the solver leaves the obstacle and continues moving in its original direction. The hand is removed from the wall only when both sum of turns made, and current heading are at zero. This allows the algorithm to avoid traps shaped like an uppercase letter G. Assuming the algorithm turns left at the first wall, one gets turned around a full 360 degrees by the walls. An algorithm that only keeps track of current heading leads into an infinite loop as it leaves the lower rightmost wall heading left and runs into the curved section on the left hand side again. The pledge algorithm does not leave the rightmost wall due to the sum of turns made not being zero at that point. It follows the wall all the way around, finally leaving it heading left outside and just underneath the letter shape. This algorithm allows a person with a compass to find their way from any point inside to an outer exit of any finite two-dimensional maze, regardless of the initial position of the solver. However, this algorithm will not work in doing the reverse, namely finding the way from an entrance on the outside of a maze to some end goal within it. Tra copyright Mose algorithm. Tra copyright Mo's algorithm, invented by Charles Pierre Tra copyright Mo, is an efficient method to find the way out of a maze that requires drawing lines on the floor to mark a path, and is guaranteed to work for all mazes that have well defined passages. A path is either unvisited, marked once or marked twice. Every time a direction is chosen, it is marked by drawing a line on the floor. 
In the beginning a random direction is chosen. On arriving at a junction that has not been visited before, pick a random direction that is not marked. When arriving at a marked junction and if your current path is marked only once then turn around and walk back. If this is not the case, pick the direction with the fewest marks. When you finally reach the solution, paths marked exactly once will indicate a direct way back to the start. If there is no exit, this method will take you back to the start where all paths are marked twice. In this case each path is walked down exactly twice, once in each direction. The resulting walk is called a bidirectional double tracing. Essentially, this algorithm, which was discovered in the 19th century, has been used about a hundred years later as depth first search. Dead end filling, dead end filling is an algorithm for solving mazes that fills all dead ends, leaving only the correct ways unfilled. It can be used for solving mazes on paper or with a computer program, but it is not useful to a person inside an unknown maze since this method looks at the entire maze at once. The method is to 1, find all of the dead ends in the maze, and then 2, fill in the path from each dead end until the first junction is met. Note that some passages won't become parts of dead end passages until other dead ends are removed first. A video of dead end filling in action can be seen here. One. 2. Dead end filling cannot accidentally cut off the start from the finish since each step of the process preserves the topology of the maze. Furthermore, the process won't stop too soon since the end result cannot contain any dead ends. Thus if dead end filling is done on a perfect maze, then only the solution will remain. If it is done on a partially braid maze, then every possible solution will remain but nothing more. 3. Recursive algorithm if given an omniscient view of the maze, a simple recursive algorithm can tell one how to get to the end. The algorithm will be given a starting x and y value. If the x and y values are not on a wall, the method will call itself with all adjacent x and y values, making sure that it did not already use those x and y values before. If the x and y values are those of the end location, it will save all the previous instances of the method as the correct path. Here is a sample code in Java. Maze routing algorithm, the maze routing algorithm is a low overhead method to find the way between any two locations of the maze. The algorithm is initially proposed for chip multiprocessors domain and guarantees to work for any grid-based maze. In addition to finding paths between two locations of the grid, the algorithm can detect it when there is no path between the source and destination. Also, the algorithm is to be used by an inside traveler with no prior knowledge of the maze with fixed memory complexity regardless of the maze size. Requiring four variables in total for finding the path and detecting the unreachable locations. Nevertheless, the algorithm is not to find the shortest path. Maze routing algorithm uses the notion of Manhattan distance and relies on the property of grids that the MD increments decrements exactly by one when moving from one location to any four neighboring locations. Here is the pseudocode, without the capability to detect unreachable locations. Shortest path algorithm. When a maze has multiple solutions, the solver may want to find the shortest path from start to finish. There are several algorithms to find shortest paths most of them coming from graph theory. One possible algorithm finds the shortest path by implementing a breadth-first search, while another, the A algorithm, uses a heuristic technique. The breadth-first search algorithm uses a queue to visit cells in increasing distance order from the start until the finish is reached. Each visited cell needs to keep track of its distance from the start or which adjacent cell nearer to the start caused it to be added to the queue. When the finish location is found, follow the path of cells backwards to the start, which is the shortest path. The breadth first search in its simplest form has its limitations, like finding the shortest path in weighted graphs. See also, mazes, maze generation algorithm, stop or my dog will shoot, an episode of The Simpsons in which Lisa uses Tremor's algorithm. References External links, Think Labyrinth Maze algorithms, maze blog, solving mazes using image analysis, maze generation and solving JavaPlet, video, maze solving simulation.